All right, all right, all right, all right. So here we go. Um, Spoilers. So the first thought I had when it came on screen was that these are space Power Rangers. Uh, they all have different colour suits. They've got their own different powers and different attributes to the group, yep. which is very much kind of Power Rangers-esque. That text at the start. Yeah, there was a, a was scroll like, that was, you know... We're predating, <laughs> predating the, um, the Asgardians and stuff and yeah. all of that. And I'm like, okay, we're in origin we're, we're territory. They flip back and forth quite a lot. So I had a, a tiny bit of trouble just going, where are we? Uh, are we in future, past, middle? Like, come on. Like, let's just kind of focus a little bit here, guys. Yeah, it's very jumpy. Yeah. Um, they tried to make a massive, like, love triangle, which I was kind of a bit like, Not even eh, necessary? Not necessary. Everyone loved everybody, and it was just a, a bit of a headache at the end. It was just like, the kid loved Icarus, and it's just like, dude... Icarus loved freaking what's her name? Icarus loved What's her Cersei. name? Love freaking Jon Snow. <laughs> yeah. Jon Snow loved her, but he loved a sword as well at the end. And <laughs> it's just yeah. it's so much. It is a lot. And it was it was taking so long to get anywhere. Um, oh, but man. yeah. So that was my first thoughts of it. Um I also kind of joked to Stan about Icarus flying too close to the sun. <laughs> yeah, if anyone hasn't <laughs> yeah, seen Craig great, Ferguson yeah. on the late late show um, him and Jeff, the skeleton droid mm. thing. If you know what we're talking about, look up the video. But if you haven't seen the video, it's off, uh, type in Craig Ferguson, Icarus. Yeah. Um, it's really funny. It's like when Icarus flies into the sun, it's just like that joke just comes back into your head. That it's was, like, oh my God. I was just like, you know, ready to throw my popcorn and just be like, done. <laughs> Like, you know, the, like, the why fact did that, he do that? Yeah. The fact that they flipped Icarus and made him an evil dude. And I'm like, Why? He was the one that, like, we're on board with. He's the hero. Like, when he's, like, you know, when they're all fighting him and stuff, I know they're like, oh, we've got to try and save Earth and stuff. I was just like, yeah, Icarus, you just go ahead and freaking kill him. Kill them all. <laughs> but it also reminded me of, like, how some of the superheroes should have been. Like, the Flash. Like, her powers of uh, running around yeah. and everything can were you name, amazing. Can you name any of those characters... Their names by name? Well, if, if I look at my list. No, no, just from what you saw. Can you remember any of their names Icarus. besides Icarus? And, and Athena. Yeah, and Athena. Jolie. <laughs> and those are the Cersei. standout. Yeah, those are the standout <laughs> characters. Those are the ones that you're like kind of interested in, but the rest are like yeah. just extras that they have a story and they have dialogue and you're There's just like, so I don't care. so much that I wanted to know about um, like Droog. I wanted to know more about his story and, you know, why him and Icarus hated each other. And, you know, I wanted to kind of see them go head to head. And then Thena made a joke that she always wanted to fight Icarus. So it's like we only got like seconds of a, a tiny fight. And it's just like, what? It's over? Like, because she went up into like a little beam when they all became a uni mind. I was like... <laughs> I, I want to see some fighting. Yeah. I'm like, why is everyone just standing around having this discussion or just staring out at these like beautiful atmospheres and just it these. It was very visually looked, beautiful. Yeah. Visually amazing. Yeah. But what the hell, like the <laughs> scope of it looked so great. Yeah. I got bored with it after and a while. You made a good point in um, while we're driving home that every emotional scene gets cut really short. Mm. So it's like as soon as you start to get a little bit emotional, they cut it with like a joke or Just, yeah. something uh, Something happens and it's like, oh, that moment's over. Let's continue. They're like, by the way, uh, Selma Hayek died. And then he's like, oh, and he drops his pie and... And then crushes I, it. <laughs> yeah, crushes the pen and stuff. I'm like... Why? Yeah, made you made a joke. Yeah. Why did? Why can't he just put it down on the table and just sit down and just kind of reflect? Crawl. Yeah, crawl yeah. into himself. Just kind of like just you know hunch over. Like you know he's about to break down, but he's got to stay strong. And it's like, what do we do now? Mm. Why can't he? Like, there's all these chances for emotion. Instead, there's just these like you know it. It was cringeworthy how heavy-handed it was yeah. on some of the little messages in there where they're just like, no, yeah. don't use violence, son. <laughs> Remember, just have a louder voice and have a good enough argument. Freaking, <laughs> you know, we don't use violence and stuff. Yeah. And I'm just like, shut up. I'm in a freaking movie to get entertained with action and superheroes and stuff. <laughs> Instead, I'm being lectured with the freaking, <laughs> you know, 
the I hate it when movies they point at you and say, "See, see, that's the message. We need to be better." I'm like, "Shut up! <laughs> I know what I'm doing. I don't. I'm here to be entertained. Forget how harsh the real world is. Yeah. I'm not here to freaking like you know be lectured and be given a lesson and stuff. Yeah. But it's it's so <laughs> stupid because like even to this whole thing about the checklist that they've had. Right. So they had everyone's like five guys, five girls. You know, all different all, races, yeah, and colors, all, sexualities, and, so, yeah, and stuff, all that kind size. of stuff. Uh, they had the and, deaf lady, they had mental disability, they had yeah, Jolie's character, and, yeah. and just yeah, and you know, the the gay couple, and, yeah. the, and all of this and that stuff. And you just didn't have the one important thing was character development from a very good yes. script, yeah, but. If you if you don't have that, then you got nothing. Yeah. Why can I relate to Luke Skywalker? Mm. Because we've all looked out at the sunset and just gone, man, I really want to get off the farm and get started with my I life. Think the, yeah. Why can we relate to Peter Parker? Mm. Because we all want to do our best for you know, like Peter use our Peter, brains to freaking yeah. try and like you know, we're all a little bit nerdy inside. Why do I? Why me as a person can watch the X Men and you know. <laughs> Can you tell me what character I relate to? Wolverine? Nope. Who? The, um, keep going. Gambit? Nope. I don't know. Charles Xavier? No. <laughs> Magneto? Nope. I don't know. Rogue. Oh, that's mine. You can't I can, have her. I can relate to Rogue because we've all known what it's like to not have human contact and to be isolated and feel alone and feel like this is going to be forever. <laughs> that's something that we've all had yeah. to go through i can relate to rogue and she don't look like me i don't need her to look like me mm. and freaking this movie was just so hell bent on being like yeah we got all these superheroes and we got all these freaking like you know characters and yeah everyone can relate to them and stuff and it's like no nah. no like there's there's too many cooks in the kitchen for sure so yeah. you had four writers um, all in on this, you have way too many characters to try and build together. So what they did with Avengers is like they built it over time. So you had the time to learn about the character, be invested in them. So when the character dies, you feel it. Um, they didn't have really enough time for every character for you to feel an impact of their world. So like when um, the gay couple scene came on, it's like, yes, it's beautiful. It's a great scene. But it doesn't last that long. It's like a couple minutes where you're supposed to feel um, the impact of uh, this character and his world. And you're just like, okay. <laughs> and I don't want to be that guy who's like, well, freaking, you know, let's, let me use this as an example. But I'm going to use it as, as an example. Guardians of the Galaxy. When James Gunn made that. And he was like driving home and he was like, man, it's a big commitment to any Marvel project. It's going to take like four years of my life to get this done and ready to go and stuff. Mm. And he was like, how would I do it? Because originally Marvel wanted to have the Fantastic Four, but the rights were at uh, Fox. So they're like, what other team movies we got? Uh, let's see if we can um, throw something at James Gunn, see if he's interested in stuff. We'll work with him because he's a good yeah. small budget independent director. Yeah. And what did he do? He was like, "All right, I can um, I can make Rocket uh like a failed experiment and stuff. Or I, Groot can be like you know kind of mascot type, but still a lovable like the heart of this kind of thing. It's not all just based on Star Lord. It's also Gamora's story, because it's a story about how we have like you know it's not just the sins of our parents, like with Gamora, it's also the love that we got from our parents and stuff. And Star-Lord, you know, he loved his mother. Gamora, she was afraid of her father. And that, all the way that winded through with like Drax saying, I lost my family hmm. and, you know, uh, there's nothing I can do, uh, nothing I've got but revenge. And then he finds his family there in freaking all these characters and stuff. But they didn't. he didn't overcrowd it. We didn't get freaking Nebula jammed in the Guardians yeah. part of the crew. We didn't get Mantis jammed in there. We didn't say, oh, hell, hell let's put Thor in there now as Guardians of the Galaxy straight away. It was like, no, they started small and then they worked their way up. Yeah. If I was, you know, because obviously I'm such a great talent. <laughs> if I was writing this <laughs> Eternals, I would have had Icarus going from each character like when he goes missing for all those years and stuff and they're like haven't heard from when he like kind of broke up with me and stuff 
I would have had him going to each character trying to motivate them like you can do it or you can do acting or you you can pursue this you can do that and helping them along the way and eventually him going to Selma Hayek's character mm -hmm. who was originally a, a male character in the comics but they gender changed it which is fine yeah, because it, it, it works hey um Edra um Selma? yeah he he great Heimdall proved me wrong I was like why did why they have Heimdall as freaking you know, another kind of version of Thor. Oh, because he looks too much like Thor. And then he knocked it out of the park. Mm. It was very cool. But anyway, to have him go up to Selma Hayek's character and she's just like, all right, well, now we've got to end the f***ing... Pardon my French. We've got to end <laughs> the Earth. And for Icarus to be like, no, we're not going to do that. Yeah. Why make him the villain? Oh, because we've got to have a freaking, you know, one of the team members turn evil or something it's mm. just such a flip that was just unnecessary it was stupid i hated the way they ended him well they made him so anti-social so so impersonable very relatable like in terms of like you know what i'm 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 just here but, to kind of help but i'm not ready to leave but there was no character development on him at all it was just like he was there and you know just kind of floating or staring or doing just something. brooding and brooding. stuff yeah that's and good just word. like i think they were trying to make him a bit of a weaselly worm kind of character to be like oh he's hiding something and when the big reveal happens i'm just kind of like at that point of like hey i'm with him you know oh, I knew he was bad, um, like from yeah. the movie standpoint, because I was like, "Yeah, but I've I thought there was, it. I, I thought there was going to be more to the story. I thought it was going to be Selma Hayek's character was going to try and kill him mm. with the deviants, and then he ends up freaking, um, you know, oh, sort of okay. escaping no, or something. I kind of connected that but, one up. <laughs> but I was, I was holding out so much hope for him because he's the hero, he's the leader in the comics and stuff. He's yeah. one of the main dudes, and they screwed it up. Not happy. <laughs> um, you know, I can't think of much else. I, I think I can go on and on, but what yeah. do you think? But let us know what you think about this movie in the comments below if you've seen it. Um, check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Twitch. And thanks, thanks for, watching, for watching, guys. Bye. Bye.